Hi everyone, I am Aram Chivanyan, I am uh, cryptography at FIRO and first want to thank you organizers for inviting me today. I am really happy here to be here and talk more about Lelanto Spark, which is our confidential payment protocol designed jointly with Aaron and with an important contribution and feedback from Ko, Luke and Nicholas. So today we will discuss the main privacy and user experience features of the protocol. We will briefly discuss its security model, formal security model, and we'll also look at its performance characteristics. And then we will discuss few potential future improvement proposals and the open research questions. So Lelantus has been designed in 2019 and since then has been used by few cryptocurrency projects such as Firo and Beam. And I believe it has inspired also the design of other privacy protocols such as uh, Lelantus Mimble Wimble, uh, Triptych and Seraphis. The initial version of Lelantus uh, allowed to scale the anonymity set size to thousands of thousands of uh, decoy coins. It allowed also to prevent confidentiality of uh, amounts, but it lacked a significant, uh, very important privacy feature, recipient privacy. So Spark is fixing this uh, with very interesting addressing scheme, which uh, not only ensures recipient privacy, but also makes the protocol more, let's say, hardware wallet friendly. It uh, supports multi-signature operations. It uh, provides more granular control over the coins and transactions. So, so let's see how it works. The addressing scheme, like in, in this scheme, the user secret is uh, composed of three functional components, which in turn are used to derive three different keys. The first one is called incoming viewing key. The incoming viewing key first allows to generate public addresses, diversified public addresses, which can be shared with recipients in order to receive transactions. But it also has to scan the ledger and identify all incoming transactions sent to any diversified address generated with this key. The second one is called full viewing key. This one allows to track not only incoming but also outgoing transactions so you can track when the certain coin has been spent and maintain the actual wallet balance and most importantly this key is used to perform the most computationally heavy operations of the spent transaction generation process which means that this key can be stored on less trusted but more powerful devices such as on desktop wallets while the last key called spending key which is used only for very lightweight operations to just uh, finalize the ownership proofs, it can be stored on hardware wallets. And the last part, uh, which is used to generate the spending key, can be generated, uh, can be derived by multi signature operations. Uh, this uh, some rows, you see the bold rows uh, on this diagram, they show that the components are not uh, explicitly part of the key but they are used in a committed form and uh, cryptography commitment basically is the fundamental building block of the protocol and all sub protocols which are composing sparks such as parallel one out of many proofs or range proofs or generalized charm peterson proofs they are all working with peterson commitments and uh, spark is working in utxo model like users are minting and burning coins Coin is composed, every coin is composed of a uh, separated value commitment and serial commitment, unlike the original Lelantus coins, which have more monolithic structure. And coins can be created by mint and spent transactions. Mint is used to create, uh, to transfer the base layer uh, coins to the shielded layer and also shield the new supply generated by the Coinbase transactions. And spend is that the spend transaction is the one which can consume previously minted coins and generate new coins. Let's let's go into the, some details of this of this transaction uh, algorithm. Uh, it's uh, let's discuss on a regular example which consumes two two inputs and creates two new outputs. All inputs should be referred to a certain anonymity set. 
And during the spend transaction, first creates two offset commitments, one for the value of the original coin and the second one for the serial. These commitments are encoding the same value encoded in the original coins, but are blinded, uh, separate, but are pl pl blinded, so they cannot be linked with the original ones. And spend transaction generates a special membership proof showing that this pair of commitment is actually corresponding to one of the coins in the anonymity set without revealing the link. Next, the transaction creates the new coins, the value commitment and serial commitment. And after having the value commitments, it provides a zero knowledge balance proof, along with a range proof to, to ensure that uh, no output coin will contain a negative value. At last, it reveals the linking tags of the spent coins, which are used to prevent double spending, and also they are used to generate the ownership proof through generalized charm Pedersen algorithms. Tags, linking tags, uh, they, are, they, they, they play an important role to prevent double spending and also to prove the ownership. So they are kind of derived from the coin serial number, actually the value SI in these uh, formulas, the same value which is encoded also in the serial number commitment. And then the charm Peterson proofs are uh, sigma protocols which can help to prove that these two commitments are encoding the same same values, uh, the same serial number. Uh, the, the original charm Peterson proof, uh, which, has been, uh, which allowed to ensure the discrete logarithm equality, the generalized version allows to prove the relevance of certain exponent in more generic commitments, and also it allows to generate uh, multiple assertion with a more optimized proof. And uh, the charm prediction proof is uh, quite similar to Schnorr, Schnorr signature, Schnorr-like protocols. This is what allows us also to support multi-signature operations. Uh, for uh, multi-signature, we provide modified key generation and authorization proof uh, algorithms. But uh, what is most important is these new addresses and spent proofs are totally indistinguishable from the original ones. And also, it doesn't require any trusted dealer to support these operations. We are using uh, different techniques from the well-known Frost and the Music multi-signature uh, protocols uh, designed for Schnorr signatures. Uh, let's also discuss how we maintain the anonymity sets. Like, coins are added incrementally to a global pool of coins. And we logically divide the global pool into anonymity sets of fixed size. Like potentially it can grow up to 65K. And instead of starting the second set immediately, we started by shifting left the starting point by uh, let's say 60,000 coins, just to make sure that no new started anonymity set will be empty enough and it will have enough coins to provide uh, high enough anonymity. So this way, the anonymity sets will follow to each other, and each spent proof should be generated and should explicitly refer to a concrete anonymity set. For example, the first two proofs here are uh, referring to the first set, and the first proof is referring to the fourth anonymity set. This is important also to optimize the verification of transactions. The most uh, heavy part of uh, verifying uh, Spark transaction is the verification of uh, this one out of many proofs, which in turn is boiling down to checking uh, large multi-exponentation operations. And in this multi-exponentation, the generator points are basically the commitments in the anonymity set. So assuming we have two proofs, each referring to the same anonymity set, this verification part, which is uh, using this multi-exponentation, is referring, is using, will use the same generator points, right? Which will allow us to combine them mathematically and uh, basically verify two proofs together with a single multi-exponentation. These techniques allows us to have very optimized batch verification of transactions. And uh, this table just shows some numbers that uh, with current uh, benchmarks, I believe there is uh, still some room for uh, engineering uh, optimization, but uh, the current state is that uh, with respect, uh, while keeping the anonymity set size of 65K, 
the transactions will be about six kilobyte. <coughs> uh, the proving time will take six seconds. Verification of a single transaction will be about 860 milliseconds. But uh, you can see that uh, the, the verification of page of size, uh, let's say 100, uh, the marginal cost of a single transaction verification will, will be down to 30 milliseconds, 31 milliseconds. Yeah, I also want to mention that the, the protocols comes with uh, full formal security proofs. We are using the security framework first designed and used by ZeroCache protocol, which, uh, which models a very robust framework where adversaries are permitted to add malicious coins into transactions, into anonymity sets, control the choice of transaction inputs and add arbitrary transactions to the ledger itself. And in this framework, we formally prove that the Sparks uh, ensures three security properties, which are the balance property, ledger indistinguishability property, and transaction non-malleability. The first one uh, means that uh, no adversary can alter the user's transactions and cannot redirect the outputs before the transaction is added to the ledger. Ledger indistinguishability basically captures both the anonymity and confidentiality properties of the transaction. It basically proves that uh, no adversary can learn more than what is publicly revealed on the ledger. And balance property ensures that no adversary has spent or can spend more coins than he has minted or received. Yeah, this is about Spark and uh, regarding to future improvements. Uh, we now are looking to replace the membership proofs with more efficient and uh, innovative and uh, uh, membership proofs called curve trees, as has been discussed yesterday by Go. So the most heavy part of Spark transaction are remaining this parallel one out of many proofs. Why parallel one out of many proofs? Because the mechanics of our Spark shows that uh, the coins have been composed of two different serial commitments, right? So we have to prove that given a set of pair of commitments and given these offset commitments, both offset commitments are encoding the same value as one of the pairs in the anonymity set. Curve trees are very efficient membership proofs and uh, we hope that uh, they can be used as a replacement for one out of many proofs as long as we will find a way to implement parallel version of curve trees so that it can work with pairs of commitments or we will uh, figure out how to uh, uh, engineer, <laughs> engineer the structure of our coins in order to work with uh, this regular curve trees. Another interesting open research question that uh, we have on our table at this moment is researching page proving method for curve trees. This is actually inspired by another original work uh, that we did at FIRA called Hierarchical One Out of Many Proofs and that which uh, allowed us to decrease the proving time uh, actually not proving time, but uh, to enable a very efficient page proving math techniques. And uh, it remains an open, interesting uh, research question whether we can implement something similar in countries to optimize uh, proof generation. Because like in uh, practice, like in spent transaction, you always had to generate proofs for at least two, two inputs. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Questions? Thank you.